Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video, I am going to be giving you my player ratings from our 2-2 draw with Southampton yesterday night. I've just recently given you my match reaction, the video is uploading now. So, let's get on with it. So, I'm going to give David De Gea a 6 out of 10. David De Gea, you know, didn't really have a lot to do in the game, obviously, you know, couldn't keep a clean sheet on his 400th appearance for Manchester United. David De Gea became only the second goalkeeper for Man United uh, to make 400 appearances after Alex Stephanie. Uh, David De Gea, by the way, did make a fantastic save to deny Nathan Redmond. Nathan Redmond. Uh, by the way, Solskjaer was talking about David De Gea recently, saying that David De Gea needs trophies with personal milestones. Now, this has been David De Gea's ninth season at Manchester United. He is approaching his 10th year at the football club and he has been a long servant. And like I said before, David De Gea has had seven good years out of the nine years he's been at Manchester United because in the last couple of years, he's been a liability, reflecting on the, you know, the calamitous mistakes he has made. And he has been heavily criticised for this. But David De Gea, I think, is probably going to remain our number one for next season. Dean Henderson will probably be our number one in the foreseeable future and all of that. So let, we'll give David De Gea a 6 out of 10. Um, Anwan wan Bissaka, going to give him a 6 out of 10. I don't think Anwan wan -Bissaka, you know, was at his best, you know, looked fatigued. Didn't really get on the end of anything, did Anwan wan -Bissaka. Uh, Maybe, you know, it would be the right idea, you know, to rest Anwan wan -Bissaka for the Crystal Palace game on Thursday. But overall, I still think Anwan wan -Bissaka's enjoyed a very, very good first season for Manchester United. You know, we did get him from Crystal Palace last summer for around £45 million. Since the resumption of the season, you know, we have seen the attacking side of his game and his defensive contributions all always been very, very good. But yesterday night wasn't really that good. Um, Victor Lindelof going to give him a 6 out of 10. You know, he wasn't at his best. You know, he did make a vital interception, uh, made some good clearances and made some decent tackles. But Victor Lindelof, you know was definitely you no know, accountable for Southampton's late equaliser, you know, from Obi Femi. You know, he actually you know should have defended that, should Victor Lindelof. And Victor Lindelof's had a few bad games as a Manchester United player. Um obviously, you know, this has been his third season at the football club. You know, we got him from Benfica back in 2017 for £30 million, you know, Victor Lindelof. And like I said, when we first got him in, he struggled for that consistency in his first season. But last season, this season, a lot of aspects of his game have improved. But, you know, maybe Manchester United do need a centre-half. So, 6 out of 10 for him. Harry Maguire, going to give him a 5 out of 10. I don't think Harry Maguire was too good. Like I said, I'm a reaction, you know, as the game went on, he grew into the game. Uh, definitely, you know, Harry Maguire uh, was, a, was accountable uh, for Stuart Armstrong's first goal. It wasn't entirely his fault, but he was caught off guard far too easily with Harry Maguire, you know. But I don't think his composure was too bad, so let's give Harry Maguire a 5 out of 10. He's made a few mistakes as Harry Maguire, you know, since the resumption of the season. I still think he's a very, very good centre-half, and I still think he's had a good first season for Man United. You know, we got him from Leicester last summer, for £80 million, pounds. so he's the second most expensive sign of the club and he's the most um, expensive centre-half in the world. Uh, Luke Shaw, let's give him a 7 out of 10. I don't think Luke Shaw had a bad game. You know, some of his decision-making was quite good. Uh, don't forget he played that fantastic pass to Rashford. Uh, Rashford, of course, though, did have that goal disallowed. Uh, Luke Shaw did come off injured. Um, I think he um, injured his ankle. Hopefully, you know, the injury is not too severe, you know, because Luke Shaw is our first choice left back. And um, he missed the first part of the season with injury, but since he's come back, you know, he has actually you know, made a fantastic impact. But Luke Shaw is very, very injury prone. Paul Popper, um, I thought uh, Paul Popper had a pretty poor game. I'm going to give Paul Popper a 4 out of 10. Um, like I said, he... 
made the mistake that led to Stuart Armstrong's uh, first goal. Um, he was easily dispossessed by Danny Inns. Uh, Paul Popper also made another mistake in the first half and I thought he was very, very slow on his decision-making was Paul Popper. Uh, I did say, didn't I, you know, since the resumption of the season, you know, Paul Pogba has, you know, really, really improved. And to be fair, he has done, but he wasn't too good yesterday night against Southampton, Paul Pogba. Um, but I still think his combination with Bruno Fernandes in that midfield has, you know, been very, very good. He scored in the 3-0 win against Villa. You know, that was his first goal of the season for Man United. Uh, we are still hopeful of getting Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the club. Because there were stories coming out recently saying that we'd spoken um, with Paul Popper's agent, Mini Raliola, over extending Paul Popper's contract because Fabrizio Romano had revealed this. Popper's just got under a year left on his contract at the moment, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. But at one point, it was looking very, very imminent that Paul Popper was going to be leaving the football club. Like I said, didn't really have a perception on him earlier on in the season because. Um, Um, he was out with that ankle injury, don't forget. So it wasn't at his best, Paul Popper. Uh, Nemanja Matic, uh, going to give him a 6 out of 10. Thought um, some of his composure looked quite good. Some of his composure looked quite good. Uh, Matic did look a bit exposed in that midfield um, a few times in that first half. Um, I thought um, some of his passing was quite good and he allowed um, our full-backs into play. So Matic, you know, didn't have a bad game, but, you know, was far from the best player. But I've been impressed with Matic anyway uh, this season. He's done very, very well under Solskjaer, you know. And obviously, you know, he's getting more starts now. Obviously, you know, before lockdown, you know, McTominay was playing ahead of Matic. So we'll give him a 6 out of 10. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, let's give him a 6 out of 10. Uh, I don't think Bruno Fernandes was at his best, you know, lacked that composure. Um, he doesn't usually, you know, lack that composure. Bruno Fernandes, though, did still get an assist, you know, for Anthony Martial's second goal. Um, I think Bruno Fernandes has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. He has got now eight goals for the football club since his arrival from Sporting Lisbon in January. Don't forget Bruno Fernandes became the first player to win back-to-back -back player of the month since Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, he won Premier League player of the month for June. He also won it for February, reflecting on his good run of performances. But you can still say that Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in the team. So yeah, we'll give him a 6 out of 10. Um, Anthony Martial, um, he was obviously now playing centrally because he's been playing centrally this season. Going to give him a 8 out of 10. I thought Martial enjoyed an exceptional game. Like I said, got the goal. It was a fantastic goal, by the way. The way he cut inside Kyle Walker-Peters and the finish was sublime. Uh, Martial, also got the assist, uh, Martial also got the assist for Rashford's first goal. And he also had a few other chances as well. Uh, don't forget, you know, Martial should have scored that chance uh, from that mistake from James Ward-Prowse earlier on in the first half. I actually never got to mention that on my match reaction. Uh, Martial is now on six, uh, 21 goals in all competitions this season, and that was his 50th Premier League goal for Manchester United. So he had a really, really good game, did Anthony Martial. Looked very, very dangerous when he had the ball. Uh, Marcus Rashford... I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Um, I thought he had a very, very good game. Marcus Rashford, you know, like I said, got his name on the score sheet. Um, always looked dangerous when he had the ball. Also made some very, very good runs. And you know, that's Rashford's second goal since the resumption of the season. And like I said to you earlier on in the season, Marcus Rashford was a big miss for Manchester United. He really, really was a big miss for us. He really, really was a big miss for us. And overall, I think Marcus Rashford is one of our best players. I think Rashford is on now 21 goals in all competitions this season. You know, Mason Greenwood, um, I thought he was a bit below par was Mason Greenwood. Going to give him a 5 out of 10. Um, I thought Ryan Bertrand definitely had Mason Greenwood in his pocket. You know, Mason Greenwood did struggle against Ryan Bertrand. Um, and he's been in very, very good form recently as Mason Greenwood. Like I said, he's got 16 goals in all competitions this season and Solskjaer was recently talking about Mason Greenwood, you know. He was recently talking about him because he knows the impact that Greenwood has made. 
he says um, that, you know, Mason Greenwood's ready to play for England at senior level. You know, Solskjaer's been talking a lot about him recently and he's definitely the foreseeable future for Manchester United. But let's be honest, you know, he wasn't great yesterday, you know, Mason Greenwood. Uh, like I said, Solskjaer brought substitutions on in the game. Um, obviously brought all five substitutions on. You know, Daniel James came on, going to give him a five out of ten. Um, Fred came on. He wasn't too bad when he came on, going to give him a six out of ten. Of course, uh, Brandon Williams came on in the game. He didn't look too bad when he came on. Looked quite energetic, Brandon Williams, so we'll give him a six out of ten. Um, don't forget, you know, he had that head injury. Um, he collided heads with Kyle Walker-Peters, so now Brandon Williams has got an injury as well as Luke Shaw. So, yeah, so that is your player ratings from our 2-2 two -two draw with Southampton yesterday. But, uh, Sol like I said, I'm a rat track, you know, Solskjaer was giving his verdict on the game, and, you know, he says Man United did not do enough, you know, to win the game. There's talks, obviously, you know, saying that uh, Romeo... Uh, should have been sent off for Southampton with that challenge on Mason Greenwood. So that's definitely you no know, one of the talking points. But it's uh, very, very um, infuriating because we've missed out on the chance to go third because obviously, you know, Leicester lost to Bournemouth 4-1 recently. Chelsea lost to Sheffield United 3-0 recently. So the advantage was there. And we you know we failed to capitalise on it. But like I said, the Maratri actually you now I'm still very, very convinced that we can finish in that top four because we do know how important Champions League qualification is for next season for this season, obviously. We know how important it is. And obviously, you know, Champions League qualification uh, will probably, you know, give us an impact on our transfer business in the summer and that. But, you know, the good news is, you know, we are still unbeaten in our last 18 games in all competitions. And we are unbeaten in our last, is it, 11 league games. And this is our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. But definitely no was two points dropped yesterday night. Um, it was a shame, you know, Obifemi scored a late goal. Like I said, Victor Lindelof was definitely accountable for it. And Southampton, you know, will be very, very delighted uh, with the point. And like I said, prior to the game, you know, Southampton are a good team, like Solskjaer also mentioned. Um, earlier on in the season, Southampton were facing a relegation battle. And, you know, it looked like earlier on in the season that, you know, Ralph Hassan Hutter was going to get sacked as Southampton manager. You know, they had that 9-0 defeat to Leicester. But since then, you know, they have rejuvenated themselves as Southampton, you know. Uh, like I said, though, now we've got three games we've got three games remaining in the Premier League. Uh, we've obviously, you know, got Palace on Thursday. Maybe now I could expect Solskjaer to make some rotation. Maybe he's not going to go with the exact same team uh, for the sixth game in a row because obviously now he's gone with the exact same team for five games in a row. That's the first time since February 1993. So maybe some rotation will be made against Palace. And after Palace, we've got West Ham. And then after West Ham, we've got Leicester on the final day of the season. And that, you know, could actually, you know, decide who finishes in the top four. But, you know, I'm still very, very convinced, you know, that we can finish in that top four. You know, we have to finish in that top four now anyway, because Manchester is, is a two-year Champions League ban has been overturned by CES. Obviously, if it hadn't have been overturned, then obviously, you know, would have had, uh, then fifth place would have been a Champions League spot. Then, you know, fifth, then fifth place, you know, would have been a Champions League spot and all of that. But Solskjaer did recently demand maximum points and he says, you know, we've got to uh, win all our remaining games if we do want to get qualification for the Champions League. But you can see the areas in the squad where we are lacking and, you know, Solskjaer has told Ed Woodward, you know, the three, the three positions where he wants to strengthen up and Solskjaer said he wants to recommend the striker in he wants to recommend a right winner in and he also wants to recommend a box to box midfielder in. There's still some reports saying that he wants to recommend he wants to recommend a centre half in. So these still areas in the squad that do need to be addressed. Don't forget prior to the game, Solskjaer did say our plans for next season, our pre season plans and our transfer strategy is up in the air. 
because of the uncertainty of how the season will finish. Um, I'm not sure what our transfer budget is, like I've mentioned before, uh, because Solskjaer um, did say, because uh, of the financial impact of the coronavirus pandemic, you know, he's unsure how much he's going to get to spend in the summer transfer window and all of that. But like I said, you know, we've got priorities. Uh, the FA Cup is a priority for us. The Europa League is also a priority for us because that's a chance for us winning two trophies this season under Solskjaer. It's a chance for us winning two trophies this season under Solskjaer. I know we are into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We have got Chelsea and we are into, well, we're more or less into the last eight of the Europa League because we are 5 nil up against Lask from the first leg. Don't forget, recently the draw for the Europa League quarterfinal was done. We've either got Copenhagen or Istanbul Basakia. So there you go. But we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under Solskjaer. And, you know, Solskjaer has now been at the football club for 18 months. But yeah, it was disappointing that we dropped two points. But we are still on course. You know, we are still heading in the right direction under Solskjaer. Like I said, you know, a lot of aspects of our game have really, really improved. You know, we are scoring more goals now. We're creating more chances. You know, like I said, the combinations in the team have really, really improved. You know, defensively we do look better, but we are still making mistakes um, in that back line. And, you know, we look very, very deadly in that attacking line, you know, with the likes of Martial, Rashford, Greenwood, um, Bruno Fernandes and that. So we have got a good squad and it's a, it's a top four squad, I think. You know, I don't think the squad's good enough to win the league or challenge for the league as yet. But if we make some signings in the summer transfer window then I think, you know, next season we will challenge for the Premier League title because I did say next season our expectations will be to challenge for the Premier League title, you know, because we do want to be up, up there with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool and Solskjaer. I did recently make an admission saying that we've got to spend money to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. And, you know, like I said, you know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So this has been the seventh season now we have failed to mount any kind of title challenge up. And I'm actually not convinced that we can get our 21st title under Solskjaer. You know, because obviously as it stands at the moment, we've won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League. So as it stands at the moment, we are the most successful team in England. We are the most successful team in England. Uh, one thing Solskjaer did say regarding the summer transfer window is that he will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad. He'd warned our players about this quite a few weeks ago. He'd warned our players about this. Um, but um, earlier on in the season, uh, like I said, we'd enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. And obviously, you know, it looked like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was going to get the sack as Manchester United manager because we had a lot of bad results earlier on in the season. Of course, you know, we had that 2-1 home loss to Palace. We had that 2-0 away loss to West Ham. We had that 1-0 away loss to Newcastle. And it was looking like the then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial tenure at Man United was just not going to work out. And, you know, we had that 2-0 home defeat to Burnley in January. And that was our last defeat. But since then, you know, we've seen to have rejuvenated ourselves. But I've already given you the main explanations why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did not get sat as Manchester United manager. Because like I said, Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in the team. Also too, um, with Paul Pogba and Rashford now being back, you know, that also plays a part in it as well. You know, that plays a part in it because we look much better with them in the team. Uh, like I said, we've done very, very well against the big six sides this season. We've taken 18 points against the big six sides this season. So that's something else that has improved. Uh, with Solskjaer being a club legend, that could also play a part in it as well because Solskjaer was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that. So um, there you go. But like I said, you know... I've seen improvements under Solskjaer, I really, really have. You know, his decision making's improved. Um, you know, because earlier on in the season, his decision making was poor with Solskjaer. He didn't really have a plan A, didn't have a plan B, didn't really know how to change a game of football. Didn't really know how to change a game of football. So he's definitely you know, improved on his decision making. Um, he was also very tactically inept earlier on in the season. He was heavily criticised for that. 
And, you know, Solskjaer, like I said, he's given everybody their chances, more or less. He's, you know, given the young players their chances this season. He has definitely promoted the youth very, very well. You know, our recruitment's definitely improved under him, you know. Because so far, Solskjaer's recommended five good players into the football club so far and spent just over £200 million. You know, he's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in to Manchester United. So, yeah, there's definitely no positives to take from his tenure so far. You know, Solskjaer's now gained that managerial experience, reflecting how long he's been with us, because Manchester United is the third club in his managerial career. You know, before he was at us, he was at Mulder, won a few Norwegian tiles with Mulder. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff, you know, enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. Got a sat some Cardiff because, you know, he ended up getting Cardiff relegated. Um, we've also extended a lot of players' contracts since Solskjaer came in, but we're still facing a dilemma regarding the contracts because we have got around eight players' contracts that are due to expire next year. So we have got to make a decision on those eight players. Like I said, we need to get rid of more of the deadwood in the summer transfer window. Yeah, we're going to get rid of at least five players in the summer transfer window. You know, we're we'll looking to get rid of Jones, Smalling, and Rojo. Get rid of, we look to get rid of Small and Rojo on permanent transfers. Look to get rid of Jesse Lingard. Look to get rid of Andres Pereira. I'm hopeful that we can get rid of Alexis Sanchez permanently in that. So if we get rid of players in the summer transfer window, we'll generate money that way. But don't forget before the resumption of the season, it had been confirmed that we'd taken a £140 million loan from our 150 million revolving credit facility, you know, to help us get the right calibre players into the club. Because I think our net debt at the moment is around just over 429 million. Because when our financial figures had got revealed the other month, it said our debt had risen up by almost 130 million pounds. You know, this is you know what it had currently as said. But Solskjaer knows he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers. Uh, Solskjaer was recently saying as well that any any young player uh, would come to Manchester United because he recently you know, made an exciting transfer prediction and you know there's been quite a few young players on our agenda. Um, obviously, you know we're still looking to get Jaden Sancho on the board. You already know the news regarding him. We're looking at a few alternatives to Sancho. You know we've been looking at Usain Dembele recently. Um, like I said, there's a few young players that we've missed out on because they've rejected moves to Man United. You know, you had Jude Bellingham, that's rejected a move to Man United. You had Erling Haaland, that's rejected a move to Man United. You know, it's a shame that we didn't get Erling Haaland in January because it would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing. You know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does know the player really, really well. But there's a lot of players on our agenda. You know, Jack Grealish, you know, he's one of our priority targets as well. But um, there you go. But like I said, you know, there wasn't only problems with Solskjaer earlier on in the season. You know, there's been a catalogue of problems at the club for several years. You know, there's been a lot of pro problems with the club's board. There's been a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. There's been a lot of problems with the Glazers. You know, Woodward's been here since 2012 and the Glazers have been here since 2005. You know, there's been problems, you know, with certain players. Um, I think, you know, we've made mistakes in the last seven years and that's one of the main explanations why we've been so inconsistent. Um, you know, we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Ferguson era. A lot of the players we've brought in, though, haven't been the right players. You saw my video that I did recently, you know, the worst signings Manchester United have made in the last 10 years or so. But there we go, on the other hand, there's probably players that we have brought in who we shouldn't have got rid of, you know, a prime example, Ander Herrera and, you know, Romelu Lukaku and that. Um, but yeah, you know, we have, have spent a hell of a lot of money in the last seven years. But yeah, so that's uh, really um, everything to update you with um, on this video. So that is your player ratings. Your Crystal Palace preview should be coming up later on today. Um, we should be beating Crystal Palace. You know, we can't uh, afford to drop any more points, you know, because obviously, you know, we want to finish in that top four. You know, we really, really do. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.